Sometimes, when I make a great effort, I can remember her scent, the sweetness of her breath, Serena. All right, what's up, guys? Tengu230 here, here to play Serena. It was a free game. Her photo is right there. Maybe I could add another look. <laughs> Okay, it's a free game that's on Steam. They really want me to take a look at this picture. That's cool right there. Uh, wow. Anyway, that guy kind of looks like Robert Redford or something. Oh no, James Dean. But anyway. Serena, why can't I see you more clearly? Why can't I even remember? This was taken on that crisp winter night at our mutual friend's hunting lodge. We came back indoors, laughing, giddy as teenagers. It was truly like an enchanted time, like we were in a magic circle where no sorrow or pain could touch us. My love. We don't have a lot of photos of ourselves as a couple, so this one is quite important. The guy who snapped this, our host that night, used an actual film camera. It was a different world back then. My love. We don't have a lot of photos of ourselves as a couple, so this one is quite important. Okay. How do I leave? Oh, okay. I just click out of it. Anyway. Okay, as if you noticed, if, I think... If I did this last time, I, when you press escape, it just exits the game. So the game doesn't have a settings menu. So if you want to change your resolution, um, just go to the folder where the game is located in your Steam folder. And from there, there's a config.lua file. And the resolution settings are in there. Just open that file with WordPad. And once you set the resolution, Wow, I really can't move around like this. That's kind of weird. Oh uh, yeah, once you set the resolution um, to whatever res resolution you want, just remove the double, um, not the, yeah, the double dashes. Uh, I still can't understand. Even the features of her face feel hazy and distant, like remnants of a broken dream. This guy loves to talk. So yeah, just do that um, to remove the comments, and it'll set the resolution for you. So. This is a little weird, actually. I thought I could move around in first person, but I can't. My hand's going crazy. It's like I'm playing Mist or something. Somewhere in here, in our private refuge, there must be something that reminds me of her. Must be something. Okay, well... Sarah Wilson... I don't know. Josh so much Rando. wisdom and happiness in this bookcase. My life would have been much poorer without all this. Vanishing town. The smell of old books is intoxicating. What happens to wood pulp as it ages gives it that distinctive vanilla smell. Okay. I loved it when we took down one of my favorites and curled up on the bed to read together as... The wind howled outside on cold winter nights. Most of the books are mine, but all of hers are still here, too. A lot of rarities and special editions here. I didn't lend out my Necronomicon, did I? No. Of course not. Your Necronomicon? Most of the books are mine, but all of hers are still here, too. Necronomicon, okay. What shall I explore? What about this? Sharing meals with a good red wine was one of the great pleasures in our relationship, especially in the intimacy of this cabin. I should probably eat. Can't remember the last time I ate. Yet, I don't feel hungry. Well, move over there, bro. We had such a wonderful time dining in this cabin. Serena loved to experiment with her cooking. This is some cabin. What? Oh god, these controls are weird. What the heck am I doing? What's up with the pointing? <laughs> okay. I have more pressing things on my mind right now than culinary exploits. Okay. So many afternoons spent in this armchair. 
Come sit with me. I want to talk. And cuddle. What did we talk about? Damn this fallible memory of mine. The most comfortable spot in the cabin. Well, along with the bed, of course. Of course. I can imagine her cuddling up to me even now. Putting her hand under my shirt. Of course, we made love here, too. There was no place in the cabin we didn't before things deteriorated. Thanks for the forthcomingness. The most comfortable spot in the cabin. Okay. Well, along with the bed, of course. Ooh, that's a cool looking image right there. Hell yeah. What's I supposed to do? Get the fuck out of that image. Let me click on it again. What is it for? What if I look at it intently? That is kind of freaky, dude. Yeesh. This window never got much attention. Then again, the view isn't nearly as spectacular. <laughs> Priorities, right? Sure. I guess it's covered with grease and grime from cooking, mostly. Okay. There's probably nothing out there that I want to see, anyway. All the stuff I care about is inside. Well, except for Serena. Okay. I can make out nothing through this window. Nothing. Nothing at all. What is this? What's up with the, uh... Creepy kid with her hair... Cover... Her face covered with her hair. What the fuck? No, I don't want to leave right now. There's still something for me in here. And what is that? Let's take a look at this. Come love with peace in your heart, said Niam. Of the ice blue eyes, ride with me. Shed your mortal guise here in our mount. A snow white mare. Come, Oisin, to my gardens fair. To the land of youth, ply your art. Our hours shall be the cycle of days. Hours, sun and sky. And rainbow ways. Come, love, with oh. peace in your heart. It's based on an Irish folktale. Already read it. Warrior poet Oshin goes to Tirnanog, a Celtic otherworld Oshin. known as the land of youth and promise. Cool. Niav is of the Fey folk, the fair ones, fairies. Okay. Let's get to know. Weird mix of doggerel and artistry. The elemental imagery is evocative, but the language and structure are a bit quaint. Still, some lines jump out at you. I've always been drawn to things that are kind of both good and bad at the same time. Maybe because that's so like life. My grandma introduced me to these old legends when I was just a kid, in between stories of what she could still remember of her childhood in the old country. Weird mix of doggerel and artistry. The elemental imagery is evocative, but the language and structure are... Something draws me to this trunk. Is it the memories locked within? Or something else? We use this trunk to store trinkets and papers, but... I can't help thinking there's something of importance inside. I wonder it's what it too painful. Be. I want to, but not yet. Just do it. Well, let's head over here. Um. Our refuge from the world. A place of warmth and passion. Sometimes we joked we needed to be so far out in the woods because that's how our sex life was. Far out. The furniture came with the cabin. But the bedclothes we brought with us. A place like this needs some luxury. But without her... There are no monsters under the bed. I guess they're all in my head. I feel too restless to sleep right now. That's fine. I don't sleep well without Serena next to me. Both a blessing and a curse, I suppose. There are no monsters under the bed. Okay. I guess they're all in my head. Just checking. 
The clock is a trophy from our flea market adventures. Chalk this particular purchase up to every cabin needs one. It's a beautiful day, though there's an unnatural calm surrounding the area. <laughs> and what would that be? I've always loved the hazy afternoon shades of this place. It's deep into summer, so there's a few hours left until it gets dark. Ooh, it's gonna, oh, a mirror, look, that's cool. The sunlight is so bright here. In other circumstances, this would have been the perfect afternoon for us. There's a crack in this window from a tantrum she threw some time ago. It wasn't the only thing she threw. Not exactly perfect soundproofing. Okay. The sunlight can be confusing, oppressive, as if pregnant with some ill omen. Or is the stress finally catching up with me? What is up with you, bro? Dearest, how do I say any of this? I like your way with words, but if I don't write this, I don't know what I'll do. My life feels so unreal now, dreamlike, but wonderfully so. Let me try, even if clumsily. The hours I spent with you when we last met are precious to me. I was so lost such a short time ago. Everything seemed drained of color and feeling. I think we were meant to find each other, to bring meaning to our lives again, make sense of the confusion shrouding both of us. When we stepped into the crystal silence of the snowy woods, away from the chatter of the guests, all nature seemed expectant, as if holding its breath, witnessing a rare moment of something infinitely better than what life in the ordinary run of things has to offer. Do you remember how the light crust of the snow glittered in the reflected light of the country house? How the copse of trees in which we walked was haloed with a magical aura? I felt the chill of the night air, and you opened your coat and enfolded me in your arms, and we hugged tight, sharing the warmth, sharing the only thing any of us have to share on this earth when you think about it. And then you toppled us on the snow, you devil. We laughed and rolled around, my head already spinning from the wine and crisp pure night air and the stillness all around. We lay back and I guessed when I realized what I was seeing. The luminous starscape, like a vast velvet cloth sprinkled with powdered sugar, like it can only be seen in the countryside. I had tears in my eyes when I turned to you and we kissed, and it felt like the only moment in all of time, or outside time, and ours was the only spark that could ignite the universe. You gave me these moments. You complete me in ways I never knew to dream of. Let me be the one who makes sense of the confusion whenever you feel lost again. We can make our own world against the rest of the world if need be. Together we can silence all the demons, heal all the wounds. I love you. In eternity yours, Serena. In eternity yours. That's interesting. What's in this drawer? I miss her so much. How is it possible that I can't remember her face? I don't know. That's all we got, huh? Keys. These keys are for the cabin and the car. Okay. Nothing to be in this bottom drawer. They prevent my blood pressure from skyrocketing. Doctor's orders. And Serena's. Okay. Hers. I used it too, when shaving. There's a strand of blonde hair in the comb. Yes. Blonde hair like sun rays. I'm remembering. What's wrong with my memory? Did I have a stroke? Hmm. What? Hmm. It's a little creepy. She also had a brush, but I can't see it anywhere. Nor some of her other personal items. It's just a regular comb bought from a supermarket. New enough to still have all its teeth. Hmm. Hmm. She also had a brush. There's only an outhouse, and for some reason, whoever erected the rickety thing didn't think to include wall-to-wall -wall mirrors. So, <laughs> this came in handy. <laughs> Should I dust for fingerprints? I might if I were in a detective story. After all these years, it 
permanently smells of her and her perfume. The last thing I need now is to see myself in the mirror. I must look awful. There's dust on this, too. It's everywhere. After all these years, it permanently smells of her and her perfume. Commune Evidence, Serena's favorite perfume. Cool, okay. I've always told Serena that she doesn't need to wear perfume. Her presence is magical enough already. Seems like I... let's check this. What is in here? Nothing, it seems. Uh, I feel too restless nope, to sleep right now. now. I'll back the fuck out. <laughs> This. She adored all things of nature. I remember her long walks out in the woods. Curiously, we never brought many plants inside the cabin. We were surrounded by so many outside. I guess we were saturated by them. At least I was. Maybe I should have let her bring some plants inside. She liked them a lot. A plant is a plant. Beautiful to some, boring to others. They say these things are alive. If they are, it must be a horrible existence, confined in their own silent, dark world. We have much more interesting things than this plant inside the cabin, like my books. A plant is a plant, beautiful to some. She is fairly religious, not me. I'm the cold and cynical bastard, but I don't remember that ever being an issue between us. She always thought our relationship was a blessing. God, how I miss her. <laughs> no longer the cynical asshole, I guess. Her faith came as a surprise to me. She was never prudish about sex, so I just didn't expect it. I guess people simply aren't that predictable. That's like the third reference to sex. In no, this game. I don't want to read right now. Especially not a Bible. I have no need for the words in there. What is in here? Quite a large armoire for our admittedly Spartan knees. She uses most of it. Alright, nothing in this drawer. Let's check out the other ones. Oops. It's just more clothes. Bottom drawer. Nothing? Seriously? Okay. I can't open this? We all have our skeletons in the closet, but not Serena. She I'm not sure why, but... I don't feel like opening it. <laughs> okay. The sole thought of it drains what little energy she made this with her own hands. She was really good. He really wants to like not open things in this game. All right. Well, let's see. Need to figure out. I need to grab a key from that. Figure out how to make him open that armoire. And he keeps mentioning the books aside from her. When he was talking about the Bible, he wanted to check out his book, so there might be something here, maybe. Anyway. Alright guys, I'm going to end this episode here of Serena. Hopefully I can continue and try to get through this story right now as I keep exploring this rather... I don't know. I can imagine how freaky this cabin can probably get, but anyway... Alright guys, until the next video, game on, take care. Thank you to 30 out. Alright everybody, see ya.